You're watching Inside Automotive with Jim Fitzpatrick. Hey everyone, Jim Fitzpatrick. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. We have got a special show for you and a special guest here of our show. Uh, we, we love when this guy is on in. So uh, whether you're striving you know, for personal growth or professional success, going that extra mile can be key. That's really what we're looking to do, right? So joining us now with insights from his newest book titled Elevate Your Excellence, The Power of Doing Ordinary Things Extraordinarily Well is author, speaker, host of wildly popular podcast, The Game Changer Life, and the president of Learn to Lead, Mr. Dave Anderson. Dave, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, and, and by the way, congratulations on this incre incredible book that you've got. I know it's your 16th book, right? It is. Thank you, Jim. And thank, for, thank you for having me on. It's good to see you again. Yes, you, you as well. So, so tell me, what was the motivation behind the book? You know, this is really... It kind of evolved. It's the least business book that I've done. It's more of a personal book. It's like get yourself right book so you can get your business right book. And it evolved really from my years working. It's a weird background working with athletes. You know, I work with three different college basketball teams yeah. uh, as their mental skills trainer and with uh, some professional basketball players in the same role. Not trying to teach them how to shoot a basket. I I haven't shot a basket in 40 years. I've got two championship rings, but I haven't shot a basket in 40 <laughs> years. That's a pretty good gig right there. But I, I, I tried to teach them how to shoot a seventh one with confidence after they missed the first six. Yeah, that's... And it's all about getting your mindset right. And my last three books now have been on mindset. And so and as I'm working with these athletes, I noticed that so many of them, they have these sloppy routines. They have this fly by the seat of the pants on the way to the gym. Sure. And they walk in and they expect to flip a switch and just all of a sudden have excellence show up. Yep. And what I talk about in the book and what I teach them and what really does make a difference is that great performance begins before it begins. Yeah. That you have to start stacking wins early in the day, doing your best, not cutting corners, not making an excuse for doing less than your best, uh, not, not uh, just because we, we do less than our best and we excuse it. It wasn't that important, I didn't have time. The problem is, Jim, then you bring that mindset into your, your arena. That's right. I bring it into my arena. That's right. And it's like getting them to get that right and then being able to see the impact that, that it would have on them, how it changed their self-confidence, how it changed their discipline, how it changed their sense of self-esteem as well. And they'd already walk into the gym now with eight or nine wins stacked. Yeah. And they weren't looking for their first win because I believe momentum is earned. I don't care whether you're a sales manager, a salesperson, an owner, you can't wait around for momentum, but you can earn, you can create your own through making those right decisions and disciplines from the minute you wake up. So I've been teaching this for athletes for years, and then I started to hold a, a class here in our training center in Agora Hills, California, mm -hmm. a few years ago on mindset. And it obviously it works just as well with people in business because our minds all function the same way. And so it's what I love about principles. That's it right. doesn't, principles don't care who you are. They don't care what you do. They work if you work them. That's right. And, and so it evolved. Uh, it, it really has less to do with what you do at work than what you do before and after and how it impacts you while you are at work. Yeah, for sure. I, you were nice enough to send me one of your first books here. So I've got it and I've got it signed. So thank you very much. I'm very oh, lucky. Yeah, and we're going to have a contest later on social media, which will allow those of you that are listening to get your own book from us here and that uh, Dave has provided us with. But uh, let me just read a couple of the chapters that you're going to that you're going to really dive into, which I did already. I love the book. If, if you do not you got to run, don't walk to get this book. We're going to make a link right underneath the video that you're seeing right now, the interview. You're a click away from changing your life. I'm telling you, this is one of those books that you're going to tell 10 friends about and go, oh, you got to get this book. You know the kind of books I'm talking about. Chapter one, the little things aren't little things. I love that. Chapter two, nothing is uh, neutral, okay? Start early, stacking wins. Uh, master the moment. I'm just reading through some of these chapters. Master the moment in front of your face. Resurrect daily routines and rituals. Take 10 for mindset mastery. mastery. Tell, tell me a little bit about the, the, the ideas behind these because this is exactly what everybody needs in the morning. To your point, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a leader of a team, whether you're a salesperson out there, heck, you could be a stay-at-home mom that's just trying to get it together and keep it together. This is going to work for you, right? 
It absolutely will. Let, let's take this master the moment in front of your face. That's sure. one of the favorite things I like to talk about because I know running my business, it's really easy to confuse the scoreboard for the game, to get so hung up on where are we for the month, how much time is left, just like that athlete, they start looking, what's the score? Are we ahead? Are we behind? How much time is left? And it takes us right out of the game. <laughs> it takes us right out of the game. And, you know, when, when we spend too much time thinking about the future, that's purely anticipation. Yeah. It's not even real. None of us has that guaranteed to us. But we spend too much time talking about the past. That's history. That's yeah. just a memory trace. Right. We have no power in the past or the future. So what I try to condition people is all you have power is, is right now. There's right. power in now. What's the next one right thing I can do now that's most predictive of affecting that scoreboard? And just making sure you know what that is and that you're really good at executing that task and that you do it consistently. And, you know, we, we only have power where we're at. It's like right. be where your feet are. With social media and all that's going on so many times, it's really hard to be in the moment, even when you're at home with your spouse and your kids. That's right. Right? We're still looking at emails or, ah, or, or our texts. Never stops. We're, we're somewhere physically, and we're always somewhere else mentally, and that's stressful. It is. And it makes you just less productive. And so this is a conditioning to really master that moment in front of your face, regardless if it's a tough moment or not, but working through it, not wishing it were an easier moment, playing that poor hand well. That's and right. that moves you forward, Jim. There's no and question it's just about it. Understanding that no matter where you're at, uh, that sometimes, you can sometimes that discipline. it's hard just finding the motivation to, to get off the couch, right? And no, you gotta you gotta get to the gym. If you want your body to change and you want to remain or you be healthy, you gotta get to the gym. Sometimes it's hard just to get off the couch to get to the gym. You address that in the book, don't you? Oh, well well for sure. And that you know, and that could take us even to another one of the chapters about routines and rituals. That's it's, right. I don't think people pay enough attention to those. You know, routines and rituals, really, they're two different things. And a routine is a block of time you set aside to do something. Yeah. And the rituals are the steps you have within that routine. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have a workout routine. And when you go to the gym three days a week from 8 to 9.30, that's the routine. Mm -hmm. But I think we'd have to agree that what we do while we're there is really going to determine how effective that routine is. That's right. It's the same with going to work. I go to work from X to Y. Well, you got to look at the rituals. I mean, I didn't mean to be unkind, but I had a guy the other day, he told me, he said, I've been going to the gym three days a week for the last three years. And I'm looking at him. I said, nobody can tell. I don't know what you do while you're there. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you're talking to other people or you're watching TV, but you got to look at those rituals. And so it's really examining Look, I only have so much time in the day. Yeah. I mean, my philosophy is, Jim, if you're going to steal from me, take my money, leave my time alone. All right, I, I can get I more money. It. That's great. That's great. I can't get more time. And so <laughs> I've got a. I like highly structured days. Yeah. From the minute I get up, that get me in the moment, that right. create momentum, that do things with excellence. And so it's evaluating, not just do we have the right routines, but have we tweaked the rituals within those routines to continue to stretch us, whether it's our commute. I think most commutes are largely wasted. We listen to the news on a 30 minute commute, 20 minute commute, and we basically let the media drop its drawers and take a dump on our mindset. And, and then we, I, I, I know people, Jim, they, they arrive at work so angry. It's yeah. like, do you know what I heard? And There's no, I do, I fall into that every now and then. I'm like, why did I just do that to myself? And then we make everybody else less productive. Right. Or we're listening to sports talk radio. It's like use that routine yeah. to get your mindset right. That's right. Something educational, inspirational, motivational. Even if it's just twenty minutes each way, you can get a PhD in leadership or selling or motivation or whatever over a period of time. And so it's about reevaluating your routines. Do you have some bad ones you need to stop? You know, because sometimes we have a routine. We binge on Netflix for three hours a night, and then we complain that I don't exercise or I'd always wanted to write this book, but I don't have time to do it. But no, but you know every episode of so Yellowstone, true. right? And so it's like maybe peeling back some of these less than good routines and tweaking our rituals and continually structuring those days to get more out of the days. Not just to get through it. I don't That's just right. want to get through a day. I want to get from it. Yeah. And, and there's no whether question. Whether I do that or not depends greatly on how well I have it set up to begin with. That's right. That's right. And and I love the fact that you you point that out in the book. Uh, where it, you got it, it's all about winning the day early on, right? Right down to making your bed. I mean, that, that, that's an early win and an easy win, but it starts the day in motion, right? 
It, it does. It's like if you win the first hour of the day, yeah. not the first hour after you get to work. Honestly, it's too late. Yeah, All right? it, it, that's right. If we're stacking eight or nine losses, I mean, if we wake up, we leave an unmade bed, we don't hydrate, we do some funky grooming routine that just is, just barely does enough to perfume last night's stench. We don't put any <laughs> nutrition in our body. Right. We're, we're, we're watching news and we stacked eight or nine losses. Yep. And now you're going to walk in to your workplace and think you're going to find that excellent switch and you're just all of a sudden going to be dialed in and on. Right. It may take you two hours to dig out of that hole and to really find your rhythm. Yeah. And so it, it, it all does matter. It's that old adage, how you do anything is how you do everything because of the conditioning that takes place in your mind. That's if you're right. doing the best you can, that becomes your standard. That's if right. you're doing less than you can in anything, not making the bet, and then you're excusing it, unfortunately, that's what you're training your brain to do. Right. And you bring that poorly trained brain into a higher stakes arena, and it's going to affect your performance there. That's it right. all matters. That's right. And Dave, whether you're a business owner or a sales manager or a leader of any kind of team at all, this is of utmost importance to get your mind straight before you walk in the door in that in that setting right because if not if your mind isn't isn't on and it point in the right direction you're going to affect your whole team negatively and oh yeah there's this compounding effect i mean somebody with a right mindset has a very positive compounding effect somebody with a wrong mindset has this yep. just detrimental effect on the rest of the team i mean no one has a neutral impact on the team nobody Right. And so, you know, we can add value or we can go in and subtract value based on the fact that did we get ourselves right today? Yeah. You know, did we get ourselves right? And I was talking to an athlete one time and I said, if I'm going to work with you, you're going to start today by making your bed. And he's like, what's the big deal about that? What's the big deal about a made bed? I said, it's not the made bed. It's the conditioning that takes place. Yep of starting with a win, doing your best, not making an excuse for doing less than your best and feeling good about yourself that you did it. It's not the made bed, it's the conditioning. That's right. And so it's just, and then and then you're already on when you walk into the workplace, you're already on. You see people walk into the workplace, they don't even have a place to start. They've got no energy. I mean, they, they pick up a donut and a cup of coffee. They're walking around like a game show host waiting for something to happen <laughs> so they can react to it. And it's like you have no purpose, you have no energy, you have no, because you have no momentum. That's right. That's You're right. waiting for something to happen to create your momentum from the outside in instead of personally creating it with the right decision and right discipline. Yep, there's no question about it. Which means, by the way, for those of you that are listening, don't you just get the book. If you're in a company where, you're, where others look to you for leadership, get them all a book so you can get everybody on the same program. In fact, I would even suggest, Dave, call me crazy, but to use some of the time in the conference room to go through some of the principles in the book. This is a workbook for everybody on your team, not just you. Because to Dave's point, you might w walk in, read the book, and go, my gosh, this guy's nailed it. He's made my life so much clearer and so much easier. But that, you know, that's got to flow over to your team, to your staff, to your employees. Get them on the book as well. It's probably the best money uh, you can spend on each individual associate that you've got working for you. So uh, I, I, you're not getting this book from me, but you can get some other books that Dave sent to me because I'm, I'm telling you, this, this is something that, uh, that I've needed. And uh, it was, it was, the timing was perfect, Dave. So thank you so much. The book is Elevate Your Excellence, The Power of Doing Ordinary Things Extraordinarily Well. As I said, there's a link right below the interview that you're watching. So you are a click away from changing your life, okay? If you don't change your life, it's not Dave's fault, it's not my fault, we can't make it any easier. So Dave Anderson, author, speaker, and the president of Learn to Lead. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. I know that our viewers will get a lot out of it. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me and let me share, Jim. Absolutely. Thanks for watching Inside Automotive with Jim Fitzpatrick.